Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter from Encountering Ministries and First Baptist Church West Springfield. Uh, we are, are glad to be able to worship with you. Obviously, we're doing it through the home studio um, slash temporary worship space, but nonetheless, nothing can stop what Easter means to us. Our Lord is risen. Our Lord is alive. We're going to celebrate that. Welcome to all who have tuned in, and we are going to honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and crown him with many crowns. Call him the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So I have uh, Nikki with me. That's my wife. We're going to be uh, leading through a time of worship before we get to the message. So again, welcome. If you're interested in learning more about our our congregations and our churches, um, there are two churches that kind of have a partnership together that I pastor. Uh, one is called Encountering Ministries. The other is called First Baptist Church in West Springfield. Um, there's information about our webs on our websites that you can find, EncounteringMinistries.com and FBCWS.com. Um, we'd love for you to check us out. We have Bible study going on, starting uh, picking back up now this Wednesday coming up. Uh, through Zoom. Uh, we have small groups that have been meeting already through Zoom. It's a great way to stay connected, and you'll find information there on how you can uh, support us, uh, either through giving and, and through prayer, and we would greatly appreciate that. So with that being said, I'm going to just open us up with prayer and ask the Lord for his blessing. Lord God, this, this day, Easter Sunday, means so much to us, and we've been experiencing well, some, some challenges and some tough times in these last few weeks, in this last good month, even longer. Um, but the Easter message is so filled with hope. It reminds us that the battle is sealed and victorious and that we can overcome anything. And so I pray, Lord, for everybody who's watching right now and everyone who's tuned in and for Nikki and I as we lead in worship, uh, that we would feel a spirit of victory and we would feel a spirit of hope and we would remember that the tomb is empty on Sunday morning. Lord, we love you, and you live, and we know that you live because you live within our heart. Amen. This uh, first few songs are a medley that's kind of mashed up. Um, um, what do they call it? A mashup of different uh, songs. It's going to have two hymns in it and also a contemporary song. We hope that you're blessed by it. We hope that you sing along if you know it. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever man may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always there. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. The splendor of the King in majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great
God, you are not only great, but Lord, you are awesome. When we think about the empty tomb and we think about the victory that's over death, Lord God, what great hope we have today. I pray, Father, that this Easter, even despite the circumstances, that we will find something in this Easter that, that, that we cherish and hold on to, that it's powerful in a way that's different than it's been in the past but nonetheless victorious. Lord, we always ask it in Christ's name, our risen King. Amen.
heaven comes to fight for me. And I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. Hallelujah Everything inside of me I raise a hallelujah I will watch darkness flee I raise a hallelujah In the middle of the mystery I raise a hallelujah Feel you lost your hold on me I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The king is alive So sing a little louder 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 In the presence of my enemies Sing a little louder Louder than the Sing a little louder My weapon is my melody Sing a little louder Heaven comes to fight for me Sing a little louder In the presence of my enemies Sing a little louder Louder than the unbelief Sing a little louder My weapon is my melody Sing a little louder Heaven comes to fight for me Sing a little louder I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up on the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The king is alive I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up on the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Raise a hallelujah Raise a hallelujah I'll raise a hallelujah I'll raise a hallelujah I'll raise a hallelujah Raise a hallelujah I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. Raise a hallelujah. My weapon is my melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me.
louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar and up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. One more time. I raise a hallelujah. I'll raise a hallelujah. I'll raise a hallelujah. I'll raise a hallelujah. Lord God, that is our motto for today. That is our victory chant. We raise a hallelujah to you, Lord God. We raise that you've conquered the grave. We raise a hallelujah that you have victory over death, Lord God. And we raise a hallelujah that you live and you dwell in our hearts. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Lord, I wish I could reach out and see all the people that would worship with us right now. But I'm grateful, Lord Jesus, that you are alive and you can see us all worship together. And in your name we pray. Amen. Everybody, this is where we take a short intermission. We will be back in two and two, as they say. And we hope that you are blessed by this time of worship. When we come back, we are going to have uh, our scripture reading and a message that uh, God has put on my heart today. And then we'll do a closing song. So we'll be back in just a few. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, what a, a humbling opportunity it is to be able to deliver uh, the Easter message from the Word of God and from the message that, that's been put on my heart um, in times like these. Um, we've found you know, other ways to, to get the Word out because the Easter message, it, it, you know, it's relevant no matter what circumstances are. And you understand Easter from the perspective of the cross, um, then times of suffering, the Easter message becomes, I think, all the more important and all the more relevant for us. So again, um, it's humbling to, to have to preach through the, through the iPad, um, but it's also a joy. Um, and that's what, this, that's what this holiday has always been for us. For, for us as believers, Easter represents an, an unspeakable and incomprehensible joy. And that's not going to be taken away from us. Um, the message today is going to be different than what I had originally planned. If you saw on the online bulletin um, that's on the website, um, and I also, we also emailed it if you're on our emailing list. Um, the online bulletin had a different scripture and a different, um, different scripture and a different sermon title. And I'd still like to preach that sermon maybe next week as a follow up kind of Easter part two. Um, but the sermon that God actually gave me for this Easter Sunday. Um, is, is about the battle. It's about the battle um, that happened on Easter morning and, and the victory that, that comes from that battle. We live in times where life feels like a battle, right? And we've talked over the last few weeks about you know fear. We've talked about anger. We've talked about sadness, all those things that happen in, in the battle. And there, there's so many things right now that feel like a battle in our life. I mean, I, I, politics, wow. That, what a battle's going on there. Um, you know, medical battles, 
um, a battle to, to stay and to stay happy and find our joy, a battle to not let fear or anger get the best of us, um, a, a battle to live a life that feels like we are alive. Uh, and on Easter, how relevant that is. So I, I, I really feel like this is the, the message that I, I'm supposed to preach. So um, you'll know, I'll, I'll, those who know me anyways will know I'll do this from time to time and make some last minute changes. Um, but I'd like to read um, from John 11, 25 through 26. Um, this is something that Jesus says. He hasn't obviously even been crucified yet. Uh, Easter hasn't happened. Um, but he gives a, a prediction of who he is. And I think it's really important that we understand this and grasp everything that it has to offer us. Uh, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? I think that question is really appropriate for Easter. Do you believe this? And I, I, think, I think there's some who may say they don't know how they feel about the resurrection. They don't know what they believe in their heart to be true. There's probably a lot of Christians who um, have gone through all the formalities because the faith was their tradition. But when really pressed, do you have hope in the resurrection? Does that hope carry you? Does that hope sustain you? Or do you know where you're going? Are you confident where you're going? And do you really believe that the tomb was empty? might find a lot of people who claim to be Christians don't know exactly where that sits with them. Um, I, I told this story during our Good Friday service last night about my grandfather who, who uh, as he was getting ready to pass, um, looked at my father and said, I have no regrets, I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. And, and that's when they took him off of the ventilator. Um, and this was not any recent thing with a ventilator, this was years and years ago. But that kind of confidence, um, you know, I mean, death is a depressing thought, right? But there is no Easter without the cross. There is no resurrection without the crucifixion. And so there's this, this tension that we're going to play out today on, on something that represents overwhelming suffering and grief, but something else that represents an overwhelming joy. And so Jesus asks us, you know, do you believe this? Do you believe on the resurrection and the life? Uh, and, I, and again, very important question for today. I'm going to give you the most depressing Easter thought you've ever heard in your life. People will be reaching for the, the channel on the public access TV or, or the web browser to, to shut me off. But I'm going to ask it anyways. We're, I'm going to, we're going to be kind of raw and bold uh, in, in the way we attack this Easter message today. Um, I want you to imagine a life where um, we lost World War II and Hitler took over the world. I know, a very depressing Easter thought, but we'll get through it. Um, I want you to imagine that people are still suffering. Concentration camps still exist. Um, and, and then I want you to picture someone coming up, two men having a conversation. Um, and someone comes up and says, listen, I got great news, good news, man, gospel good news. It doesn't matter that we lost the war because I've been imagining in my mind that we didn't. And because we, we should have won and because it would have been right and just, I'm just pretending that we did so now everything's all right. I don't think that, that people would find much relief in that. I don't think that they'd find much hope in that. Um, and yet, it begs the question, why do we approach the resurrection? Why do not, not me, maybe, or, or maybe we is the wrong term. Why do so many people approach the resurrection that way? Where it's a nice story that gives us hope. It's a nice story that, that was told to Jesus' followers. And Jesus' followers told it to other people to kind of get us through the pains of our own mortality. But really, we're just still stuck. We're stuck in the concentration camp of sin and death. Um, you know, that, that type of an analogy, we wouldn't find much hope in just imagining or pretending, right, that, that we won the war in World War II, but really we were all still suffering. No, we find, we find liberation, okay, because the victory in the battle has been won. And I, I, think, I think it's too bad that there's too many people that approach the resurrection like, wow, this was a really great story. It's a story that inspires me. It's a story that gives me hope, but it's not a story I believe actually happened. And I think that's tragic because because if Jesus didn't raise from the dead, and Paul's so clear about this, right? He says, if Jesus hasn't risen from the dead, if this is not a historical fact, if this is not the justice of God that, that took the righteous one and raised him, then we're 
all still suck in, stuck in our sins and our faith is completely in vain. Really, it's his way of saying our faith is useless. See, our faith is not meant to be a philosophy or an ideology or kind of a nice thought to carry us. Our faith is rooted in something that is historical, something that happened that gave us life, that gave us freedom, that gave us uh, liberty from our chains and liberty even from the grave. And, and that's what I want to talk to you about today, because for me... Easter, as joyful as a time as it is, Easter represents the battle that took place, right? The battle of good over evil. People talk about, you know, the, the end times, the end times. Are these the end times? Look at all these crazy things that are happening. And I don't know, I don't pretend to know the answer to that. Um, but for me, Easter means that the battle's already won. At the end times battle, whenever that comes, there's already a declared victor because Jesus, who, who is said to have the first fruits of the resurrection, right? The first one to experience the resurrected life. Jesus, that, the, that reality, not philosophy, not ideology, that reality already assures me of the end result of all of this. Jesus already fought the end times battle, right? The powers of heaven and hell couldn't hold him, right? The powers of hell couldn't hold him to the grave because the powers of heaven hell have already collided and God won. God won. That's what Easter means to me. God wins. God wins for Jesus. God wins for us. And someday, whenever the end does come, the battle, the victor has already been declared. And if you listen to what Jesus says, right, I am the resurrection and the life, He's talking about the resurrection as if it defines him. He doesn't just say, I will be resurrected. He says, I am the resurrection. It's who I am. Right? It's my identity. And if you live and you believe in me, then you're even if you die, you're still going to live. And that's why he says, do you believe this? Do you have faith in that? Is that your hope? Is, is, your, is your faith and your hope and your life rooted in something that is unshakable, something that cannot be moved, something where the victory is already declared? And, and people, you know, they, they talk about this battle in different ways. Heaven versus hell, good versus evil, God versus the devil, the righteous versus the wicked. Um, but there's, there's a particular um, philosophical argument or quandary, I guess, would be the, the right term. Um, I remember hearing it in a, in a song one time from a, a band that I like to listen to. And, and it was the idea that the irresistible force, right, a force that cannot be resisted. What happens when the irresistible force meets an immovable object? Right? An immovable object. When a force that can't be resisted meets an object that can't be moved. Who wins? Now, that's a real, you can look it up, it's a real philosophical you know, quandary that, that people like to think about. Is there such a thing as an irresistible force? Is there such a thing as an immovable object? And what would happen if those two, two met? And so I, I think for, for us, the rock, the, the, the tomb, right? The stone that was rolled in front of the tomb, that tombstone represents humanity's immovable object. Right? The thing that, that I think has haunted humanity from the beginning of time, a destiny, right? The grave that, that couldn't be couldn't have been altered. And, and there's a whole Old Testament setting, an old testament testament backdrop here that I think is worth getting into. Um, you know, here would be the kind of equivalent of the immovable object. In Joshua 8 29, right? Joshua's gonna go and 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 get into the promised land and win the battle for the promised land for, for Israel. And the king of Ai. Um, he, that's, that's in Canaan, that's in the promised land. He's defeated, right? <clears throat> and it says in Joshua 8, 29, that he hanged the king of Ai on a tree until evening. And at sunset, Joshua commanded, and they took his body down from the tree, right? And threw it at the entrance of the gate of the city and raised over it a great heap of stones. And then it says this, this line, which stands there to this day. Now you'll see this a couple times in the book of Joshua, Where's this, there's these stones on a grave and it keeps saying, and these stones remain there to this day, right? And the stones remained there to this day. You'll see that over and over again. <clears throat> and, and it's because the stones were meant to be a testimony of the victory that Joshua had, the victory that Israel had over their enemies, right? And it's a testimony also of the defeat, all right, of the King of Ai. And so if, if you think about it, the stone becomes the witness and so it becomes very important that they keep coming back to it, that the stones remain there even to this day. It is the immovable object, 
all right? It cannot be altered and it cannot be changed. And so you have um, this, this idea that death is unshakable, death is immovable, um, there's a stone that can't be rolled away. Now, I'm going to give you a, a separate verse that doesn't seem related at first, but it speaks, I, I think, to the irresistible force of God. It's the promise of a coming Savior uh, who's going to undo all the evil mess that Satan brought in, into our lives through sin and through death, okay? It comes right at, the, right at the end of the Garden of Eden, all right? Right before Adam and Eve um, uh, leave the Garden of Eden. And, and the Lord God says to the serpent, right, who deceived Adam and Eve, who, who brought sin and death into the world and all the brokenness that, that we have to deal with in life. And he says, because you've done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat the dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity, which was like strife, right, between you and the woman, between you and Eve, and between your offspring and hers, right? And then it says, he, so whoever this offspring is, 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 a, is an actual person. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Now listen to that because there is a promise of a coming Messiah, a coming Redeemer, a coming Savior who's going to undo sin and death that Satan brought in, right? In the process, he's going to be struck. He's going to be cut, right? The venom of the serpent kind of symbolically is going to enter in. He's going to receive the serpent's blow, but in the process is going to crush the head, all right? And if you think about where, where Scripture says that, that, you know, that Satan is the Lord of this world, right? He's kind of the head of this broken mess. That's going to be crushed even as this Messiah is stricken and bit in the process. And so the, the Easter message really comes down to this. Who wins, right? Who's going to win? There's, a, there's an irresistible, unshakable promise of God, all right, that death will be overthrown. But like we see in Joshua and like we see throughout in the Old Testament and throughout life, there's this immovable object of death. How is that going to be overcome? How is, how is, how is Jesus, how is the coming Messiah, how is this promised one going to overthrow this immovable object? How will the irresistible force wins win? And that's the Easter message. Who wins, the immovable object of sin and death or the irresistible force of God who is destined victory? even all the way back in Genesis. And that's what Easter really boils down to. And again, some are going to say, well, Easter is just a mythical battle. It's just a spiritual battle. It's a nice story. Jesus, this is a, a big one. Jesus rose in spirit, but not actually in body. Okay, that, that his spiritually, he, he resurrected, but his body really didn't, and the rest of it, the rest of it is, is all a myth. Others are going to say Jesus didn't raise at all. Now understand, there were people who professed the Christian faith who put forth the idea that Jesus only rose in spirit and not in body, right? But as Paul says, if Jesus hasn't risen from the dead, our faith is in vain and it's useless. Why? Because this is not a philosophy. This is not some ideology, something that we can sit as theologians and think about, well, who really won? The irresistible force or the immovable object, right? This is not what this is about. This is about, has the course of history been changed? Has Jesus risen from the grave? Has death been overcome or has it not been overcome? Has the course, has humankind's course on this path of history, has it received its apex moment where new possibilities are endless, where a hope is, is beyond the grave? Has Jesus won that battle or, he, or has he not? And this is, this is super important for whatever battle you're going through in now. I can remember my son laying down in a, in a hospital bed, dying, right? Dying of, of cancer and dying of the results of the meningitis that he had. And, and I didn't want to just hear a nice philosophy. I didn't want to hear just a nice ideology. I wanted to know if the power of God was real. I didn't want to sit and debate philosophies. Not when, you're, not when your loved one is dying in a bed. I want to know who wins the battle. And even those who may have lost the battle of cancer, I want to know who wins the war. Is that battle the final say? Or is there something that exists well beyond that battle? Right? You've heard that, that saying, right? You, you, know, you can lose the battle or win the war. Sometimes you can win the battle and lose the war. I want to know who wins. 
I want to know, is the power of God who rose Jesus from the grave, right? Is that the power to raise my son if it came to that? Is that the power to raise me when it comes to that, all right? I want to know if that power lives and reigns in us. Because if you take away the power of death, then what have we left to fear, right? Oh, death, where is your sting? Where's your victory, death, Paul says. What defeat is there that can't be overcome? I want to believe in something that gives me hope, right? As it's been said, you know, either the resurrection is real, either Jesus rose, or, or either our faith is, is rooted in history, or it's nothing. It's just in vain, and it's just a nice, hopeful thought. It's like, oh, well, we lost the war, and we're all still suffering, but I'm just going to pretend like we didn't. I'm just going to imagine life without, well, what good is that, right? No, I want to know, I want to know, was the tomb empty? I want to know if the power of God exists that strong. And scripture goes out of its way to give us that hope, right? It says Jesus appeared to the 12, right? And also to, so, to some of the women there. And then he appeared to over 500 people. And then Paul says, lastly, he appeared to me, right? And I think there's a lot of Christian cliches that go around. And we see them in memes. We see them in little Facebook messages. And a lot of them are even from scripture. And they're good. They're very good. But I want you to think about it from this perspective, right? Like take one, um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, right? That's, that's a quote from scripture. Or with God, everything is possible. Listen, all these little catchphrase phrases hinge on was the tomb empty or was it not? You can't say I could do all things through him who gives me strength. You can't quote Philippians and not believe that the power of God was able to raise Jesus from the dead. You can't approach that like it's a nice story and then say, I can do anything here because God got me. God's, the Holy Spirit has me and can help me overcome anything in my life. But I don't think he could have raised Jesus from the dead. Those two things don't mix, right? All these little cliches that we give that give us hope in times like these, right? We can do all things. All things are possible with God. It's rooted in the fact that on Easter morning, the tomb was empty. The, the immovable object has been rolled away because God's power is irresistible. God wins in the, in the ancient battle between the irresistible force and the immovable object. The irresistible force of God wins every time. And if that is true, then the answer to that philosophical riddle, or the answer is there is no immovable object. If God's force, if God's power cannot be resisted, then no immovable object in your life exists. Not if God wins. Not if Easter means that the battle has already been won on Easter morning. We have to start with that premise. We have to go back to Jesus's question that he asked when he says, I'm the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? Does that take a hold of your life and change what's possible? Does it change what you can face? Does it change what you can overcome? Does it change the way you approach obstacles in your life? Is the empty tomb on Easter morning life changing? Is it radical for you or is it just a nice idea? Because if it's just a nice idea, life will go on as normal for you. But if the tomb was empty, your whole life can be changed. Just like the course of history was changed. Do you believe this? That's our starting point for Easter morning. Do you believe it? Because if you do, Everything is possible. There is no immovable object in your life. You've got addictions you're battling, you can overcome them. You've got health issues, they can be overcome. Right? Be your loved ones, you have loved ones who, uh, who passed away, even death can be overcome. If the force and the power of God to raise Jesus from the grave is unstoppable, in your life, then there is nothing that can, there's no stone, no rock that stands in your way. Nothing cannot be shaken by the power of God. Jesus, he flipped the script, right? He, he takes the curse on himself, right? He takes the curse that we're supposed to feel, right? Even we talked about this in our Good Friday service yesterday, right? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He feels the abandonment we should have felt. He feels the void. He feels the separation from his father, right? He feels what we should have felt. Why? Because scripture says he took our sin and bore it within his own body. He took that curse upon himself. Even back in Joshua, where we read in Joshua chapter eight, that they took the body of the king of I down right before evening. That comes from a passage in 
Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 21, 23, that says, don't leave somebody hanging on a tree. Don't leave them there through the evening because it's a curse to the land. Make sure you take it down. And here's Jesus hanging on a tree, taking on our curse. He's becoming that curse, scripture says, on our behalf so that we can be set free. He flips the script. And because he took the curse rather than us, the whole script changes. Now it's the stone that was rolled away that is the testimony of our enemy's defeat. No longer the stones that are piled up and immovable and remain there to this day that used to be a testimony to the defeat of the enemy. Now for us today, it's the stone that's been rolled away. That is our testimony that the enemy has been defeated. That is our witness that the battle has been won. That is our hope. And that will give us the courage to face the day. Listen, I've gone through a few weeks now. We talked about fear, right? We talked about anger. And we talked about uh, depression and sadness and having the courage in that to still hope. Listen, you want to know where my courage comes from? My courage comes from this right here. The stone that was moved is the witness and testimony that the battle is won and I can face anything in my life. We can face this pandemic. We can face loved ones that are sick. We can face our own illnesses. We can fa I can face my son's cancer. I can face anything that we've been through. Why? Because I know who won the battle. And when Jesus asks, do you believe this? I can say yes. Before we close, I want to give you this story of a... Uh, it was a man who was deciding what faith uh, he was going to give his life to. And once his decision was made, his friends asked, why have you become a Christian? And he answered like this. He said, well, it's like this. Suppose you were going down the road and suddenly the road forked in two directions and you didn't know which way to go. And there at the fork were two men. One was dead and one was alive. Who would you ask which way to go? There's a lot of truth in that. You got to believe on Easter that not only was the stone rolled away, not only was the tomb empty, not only did Jesus appear, but as Paul said, he appeared to him lastly. Even after he ascended to the Father, you've got to believe that Jesus can appear to you. Now, I know some people might immediately ask, am I, am I talking about having visions in the sky and you know what if you see Jesus in the clouds amen I don't I don't put past past to God to do anything right but I want you to know something I am telling you you can encounter Jesus the risen Lord I am telling you that the stones do not remain there to this day and because that immovable object doesn't exist you can feel and encounter and experience the irresistible force of Jesus Christ guiding you, leading you, directing you. When you get to the fork in the road and you don't know which way to go in life, I am telling you Jesus still speaks. I am telling you Jesus still guides. I am telling you he still leads. He still sustains. He is alive today or everything that I've experienced in my life was just like the temptation song. It's just my imagination. Either he's alive or this was just a nice story to get me through the hard times I went through. Are we still in our chains? Are we still in camps of sin and death? Do we tell ourselves a nice war story that's just, just our imagination? Or did the immovable object meet the irresistible force? and realize that there is no immovable object. I'm gonna close you with this scripture from 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 57. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. But listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with, imper with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. 
Victory on Easter morning. Death has been swallowed up in victory. There was a battle on Easter morning, and God wins. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for winning the battle for us. Thank you for crushing the head of the serpent, crushing the head of our enemy. Thank you for taking the curse upon yourself. And thank you for showing us that in this life, there is no immovable object as long as we hope in you. That faith cracks open even the largest of stones. That faith and the power of your spirit splits and divides in half the largest of rocks that are in our way. I pray, God, if there's somebody who needed this, this message of confidence and courage on Easter morning, I pray, Lord God, that it speaks to them today and that you do something spectacular. You roll away the objects that stand in our path this Easter morning. Inspire us, Lord God. Lift us to a place where when we declare we can do all things through him who gives us strength. It's rooted, not just in our own ideas, but in history. Amen. Everyone, we're going to get back to worship right now. I'm going to go call uh, Nikki in to join us and have our closing song. We'll see you in just a second. Everybody, thank you again for joining us today. We're going to do our last song. Nikki's back to, to sing our closing worship song, Sea of Victory. I chose this song because it represents so much of what we talked about today uh, in the message about uh, looking and seeing the victory that is in Jesus Christ. If you're battling something in your life today, I want you to remember that on Easter morning, the stone was rolled away and the tomb was empty. Amen? All right, let's sing this last one, See a Victory. Whipping may be fall, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to try you. And my God will never fail. Oh my God will never fail. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see your victory I'm gonna see your victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord There's power in the mighty name of Jesus Every war he wages, he will win. No, I'm not backing down from any giant. Cause I know how the story ends. Yes, I know how the story ends. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see your victory, I'm gonna see your victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Heavenly Father, may this be a, a life-changing moment where we look at the empty tomb. And we see ourselves through the lens of you, Jesus, as overcomers. God, I pray if there's been somebody today who's been struggling, who's been down, maybe they've been depressed, maybe they've been overwhelmed with what's been going on, Lord, I pray that the empty tomb speaks volumes as waves of your love just rush through people right now. I pray for this land. I pray for West Springfield and for Western Massachusetts. 
for our country and for our world, Lord God. I pray that people fall on their knees for you, that they're desperate for you, Lord God, that nothing else will do, that you who takes what the enemy has meant for evil and turns it to something good, Lord, do something good in this season of life right now. Do something powerful in our lives right now. Bring us to our knees to come back to you, Lord God. Bring us to our knees where we cry out for you and we say we need you and we're desperate for your love, Lord God. The empty tomb means that nothing can separate us from your love, not height or width nor depth. Lord God, your love knows no boundaries, not walls, not windows, not rooftops. Do something powerful in this time. Take what the enemy has meant for evil. Turn it into something good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. You turn it for good. Turn it for good. Enemy meant for evil. You turn it for good. Turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, then you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, then you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see your victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see your victory I'm gonna see your victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see your victory I'm gonna see your victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. see your victory we're gonna see your victory for the battle belongs to you Lord we hope you've been blessed by this service thank you so much for tuning in uh, we hope that the Easter message rings loud and true in your hearts uh, remember even the first song that we sang you asked me how I know he lives he lives within our hearts. Be blessed, everybody. Thank you again. Peace and love to you.